What are you doing, carrying a tutu? I've been what? stabbed twice. I figured out mortgage fraud, right? Being groomed, yeah, is exactly what it is. You've been caught bang to rights. What was that first sentence for? Hi guys, and welcome back to Marvin Herbert's Nothing But The Truth podcast, hosted by myself, Christian Morgans. As always, we've got another fantastic guest. Today, we'd like to be joined by Tony Sales. Tony, how Thank are we you. doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, sure, well, Good sure. to see you, mate. Thank you for having me. So, for you, you that don't know, um, Tony is allegedly or one of Britain's biggest fraudsters. Um, he's done millions and millions and millions. Um, so, we're going to go back into his story, have a look at what made you maybe become a criminal, and then look at maybe what you're doing today and what you're doing in the future. Yeah. So, um, whereabouts were you brought up, Tony? And tell us a little bit about your childhood, if possible. Um, so, I was brought up in uh, South London, in Greenwich, um, South East 10. I, two days old, my mum, uh, she's under pressure from my nan to work. She gives me to my nan to be looked after. A year later, my dad leaves. Um, and then my mum kind of spirals into uh, drinking. She meets this guy. And then they get married kind of around domestic violence. Like I have quite a normal, good childhood, really. Um, but because I live with my grandparents, I get bullied. Um, I'm wearing like 199 plimps holes. The other kids have got like Nike, Reeboks. My nan don't even know what they are. She's come through the war. She has like, the brands are immaterial to them. Yeah. So at like primary school I get bullied because I've got like my hair is just like there's no old school. Oh, it's just old school it's just mad yeah, like, all over the gap I've got pictures and it's just crazy to see your hair like how it is and You've I didn't send yeah well, well I'll send you stuff yeah. Up, yeah they're proper funny yeah like so like looking at myself like now looking back yeah I can see oh wow you just wanted to change like and that's all I ever wanted to do and um that's how it all started I go up and ask a girl that yeah at 12 11, 12, I suppose I am. And uh, she says, go away, you little tramp. I'll never go out with you. Like, I was devastated. Like, I was like, ah, oh. like, what, what does that mean? Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And um, it just led on from there. Like, at that moment, I just, like, I knew I had to get some money. How am I going to, like, my, my grandparents haven't really got money. My nan owns a shop, yeah, but she's still living hand to mouth. Like, it's kind of the money that she gets in the shop, she'll spend on food in the evening. She's doing blue rinses. Mm. So, um, it was kind of difficult, and I suppose I wanted them other clothes that the other kids had. I wanted the night trainers or the chippy well, jackets. Yeah, it's bugged me then. And I was like, when I say I don't want to go with a tramp, that impact that had, yeah. Mm. And I'll revisit this, and the reason why I revisit it is because that's what they all say. That's what all girls say at that age, you're right. Go away, you tramp. I used to believe I was because I was a tramp, but they say it to everyone. Do you know what I mean? Because that's their way of empowering themselves. Do you know what I mean? So don't hold on to that. Yeah, I mean, I, see, do you know what? Yeah, I've actually, over the last couple of years, I've actually had conversations with these people. So I've gone back and revisited it with them. And like, kind of like, you know, I didn't mean it in that way. Yeah. Like, but obviously where I've been telling my story publicly, they've heard it as well, right? So they're like, was that me that caused that? And I was like, yeah, that was you that caused that. And so when you then start to to track no, it back and talk to them, it's not, it's true, it's not, it, it didn't mean. That, but why you yeah, it's my own insecurities, yeah. you're dead right, it's my own insecurities, this is, this is, it's true. This is, this is something that I'm working on now with myself, right? That basically, it's, it's the way I've reacted to everything which has caused my life to have a problem. It's not because of the way you do it. If you do something in the way that makes me do something negative, then it's my fault for having it with you to go and do the negative. I can't blame you for doing the negative. And what I've noticed with a lot of people going through transitions, we all do similar things. Do you know what I mean? It's like, the trauma is never really relinquished until you get that closure, is it? No, yeah. Because they don't realise what them sentences mean or what that word means, like how it just sort of... And, 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 and I'm like going to be honest, I kind of felt a bit silly like of thinking like I've carried that my whole life and it weren't even meant like that. But the thing about it is but, just, do you know what I mean? Just emotions, right? And this is trauma. And this yeah. is what happens in people, what people don't realise what a sentence, what a phrase, what a term, what just a comment can do to yeah, someone's man. life. Not just yeah, man, that definitely. moment. Do you know what I'm saying? So this is things that I'm really working strongly towards because it's that feeling of um, belonging or worth that drives 98% of the youngsters into crime. 
because yeah. they want to belong to something so bad, you know, so much. Sense. They'll throw their lives away. Like someone said to me the other day, "What makes you? What makes you? What makes you believe you'll be good with the kids?" I said, "Are you joking?" I said, "No disrespect." Yeah. So we used to convince kids to throw their lives away mm. for a couple of grand, like for their whole life, 10, 20 grand. You don't know what kids will do for 10, 20 grand. Like, mm. And it's, it's happened, I've been there, I've seen it, I've done it. So mm. I believe that if I can encourage them to become millionaires, they're gonna listen. Like, you would have definitely thought so, wouldn't you? If you can sell them the, sh- the shit, you can definitely like, sell them yeah, something positive. Yeah. You're, not, you're not going out of prison, you're never gonna get hurt, you're never gonna get stabbed. And if you do, then you've got the, the the British, the British police force, and then it, when you go up to another level, you got the Secret Service, and then another level, you got the Secret Secret Service looking after your money. Do you understand? So, mm. depending on the level of austerity you get to, you've got the right people to protect your money. You're not going to get robbed. You're not going to get bullied. You're not going to get intimidated because you've got the power to be because of the influence you have with your financial revenue stream that you created from your mind that you're wasting on the road, listening to your elders telling you, "Come here, son, I've got you." and that's something I've dwelled in and built. Yeah, no, but it's true. I mean, and it's definitely something that you see on the street play out all the time with them, don't you? Do you know what I mean? I, I, I suppose with you, the way that you've come out as well, it's really good because you're someone that the others, they know you've been that violent person, yeah? You know, you they know you've been an elder, so it's kind of like it's a different thing. Like that, but then there's always also a section like yourself, Tom. Mm. There's a demographic percentage that are just like you and they're big, it's not small. Mm. Do you understand? In, in the way of impact. Yeah, you're right, like, So this is why I believe you and I have come into contact, because yeah. I believe we're gonna develop a program where we're going into the criminal fraternity on the highest level. Yeah. Because even the fraud is a fraud. Yeah, what? What do you mean about fraud? Tone, ask him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they got clear, what are you talking about, bro? Yeah. What are you talking about fraud? Yeah. What, robbery, Pete? Tell them about Robbie. Like we got to top this level. Like we got everybody at every level mm. in the criminal fraternity. They were basically saying it's a mugs game, mate. Don't, That's what's about because you can sort of catch every single criminal, every young criminal. Yeah. yeah. And when each other are speaking, you hear each other. So I listened to Marvin. Yeah. yeah. Like and when I first heard like the first stuff that he'd done in the in the beginning, and I looked at it yeah, on the Killer Keller stuff. Yeah. Remember I was there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like standing in the background, I said to him, I was shaking like. Because what he's saying, I've seen it a lot, so much stuff, and there's someone of his calibre mm. saying, look, yeah, in that way. And I, like, he said it, grooming, he said it. He said it, he nailed that, you nailed that's it, yeah, that's what, and that's said what it is. Unless you're giving them something to benefit and grow from, then it's grooming. Yeah. And that's what I've come to terms with, and that's what I've now do. That's what I live with, that's what I've developed, that's what I've transcended away from, mm. so I can help and do good. So good. what age did that girl say that the the go away? You so I was eleven, roughly? eleven or twelve. Roughly. Okay, so at twelve years old, obviously that had a massive impact on you mm. then and going forward. So that made you become money orientated in your mind. But at that point there, did you have any legal aspirations in the future? Did you have any dreams at that point there? I just want to know what sort of child no, you were. No, it was just living in the moment. Like I'm not even thinking about school about any of that stuff I'm, all I'm thinking about is those those selfish emotions really of I want to be better I want to be better like why can't why won't the girl go out with me yeah. or why can't I have the best trainers or why can't I I'm just thinking about selfish stuff so it wouldn't say it's selfish because I think children are yeah but society presses is that presses children that on really us selfish. yeah society <laughs> presses <laughs> that on us and like I try and with my own kids yeah like I mean it's difficult because they all want to keep up with the Joneses everyone wants to what, what, what I've realised with kids is this one. Every kid's exactly the same. And every kid wants what every other kid wants. Yeah. And that is as simple as that. And you've got to just sort of teach or learn or create a way for your children to live in harmony with you and presents and toys and material acquisition. So, yeah. It's fine balance, isn't it? Yeah, so. that's what you've got to do is just find the balance. Yeah, and it's hard. It's not It's not easy to do, you know? Like, it's quite difficult. and Because they all want to try and be like that. And I was just that kid that wanted that stuff because I just wanted to look better. I wanted to get the girl. I wasn't even thinking past that stage. And then, of course, everything then just morphs in. So, you know, someone knows someone who's got something. Do you yeah. know anyone who works in the shop? Got anyone that works in the shop? Yeah, I know someone that works in the shop. She has to do a bit of cash back. And now... 
you ended in a bit of cash back, yeah? Like, and you get in these cards, like back then they used to come on um, Argos Premier Points cards. You remember the old time when you go into a petrol garage, yeah? And they used to swipe your yeah. card. But back then they would come on those cards. And so if I knew someone that worked in a shop, you still don't know what the limits are on those cards. So as a kid getting those, as a young kid, you could swipe them. I mean, most times I've swiped them for 50 quid because I'm a kid, yeah? But then I realized, oh look, try 300. Oh, look, try three grand, and then once a three grand one works, you kind of get you miles ahead. Because I would have 50 50 cash back with a shop, yeah. So I'd only get like 1500 quid back, but then I've got 1500 quid. These things are only 30 quid per pop, so then you buy more, and then before you know it, like you're kind of escalating. What, what age did this begin? Sorry to interrupt you, Tim. Uh, so I was around 15 or 16 when I started doing that, yeah. When like the first couple of grabs, I met a guy. He showed me like, he just showed me, I was working with another guy, just doing little bits and pieces, just running around, being groomed, yeah? Is exactly what it is. Um, but he used to sell Puff, like Puff used to come in like uh, 16th, 17, uh, £7.50, remember, yeah? 16th, yeah. Age, yeah. Age, yeah, and it'd all be chopped up. So this geezer used to be, be the one shot in the Puff on the, on the block. So I'd go and see him, and of course that then leads into other conversations, and then I met the other guy, T, as, a, as I was coming out of these once, and then he just got me into the credit card thing before you know it. That had spiralled, but I, like... Was that the late 90s, early 90s, late 90s? Uh, yeah, so, so I'm... was quite mad, I remember when everyone... Uh, yeah. Hold on. So it was, it's before that, it's before that, it's long before that. So my son Josh was born in uh, 96, so he's 24 now. So I was 16, I'm 46. So this is a long way before that. Yeah, this is like 30 years 1990, ago. 1990, this is. Yeah, yeah 1990, this is, yeah, 30 years ago, you know, when we're actually, um, yeah. when we're actually starting. Yeah, but then I suppose what happened... I was, I, like, I, was, I'm, well, I was thinking in my head, when did the credit cards go nay on the road for us? Yeah. So the best time for cards mm. for us on the road was from 93 to 97. Yeah, yeah. Because we had the American Express black detail. Yeah, and that's when they like oh, those. Mate. They were mental, bro. It was mental. Nuts. I went out and done maybe three, four hundred grand in a weekend on a card. Yeah, no easy. authorization card. Yeah, no, man. The didn't mess about. Um, flights from Ibiza on Concourse. Concord went from um, Barcelona then, so I was getting people flown back and forth from Ibiza for about two weeks. We had the card for over there just smashing the some of them didn't have limits on some no of them no limit yeah, no, no limit on, on black cards on yeah. the black cards yeah. no limit there's no there's no there's no authorization cards there's no limit they just authorized everything boom 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 I had it for two and a half weeks in Ibiza and left it to one of the chaps over there like fraud that's what I was just trying to think when was it really good yeah you know, when it was really good and like you used to have like people going out to like Antigua everywhere man like for diamonds like yeah. everyone used to go and swipe for diamonds yeah like and it'd just be like a quick move go over there and swipe for diamonds I mean I wasn't really ever into that kind of stuff I never got into it in that way I, I was more you know, above man. it I only you knew them yeah <laughs> yeah wow mad, that's what I'm saying it's, it's like, mad mate fucking yeah. nuts like yeah going over there for you know, whatever there yeah. The opportunities we missed out as kids growing up, like because of ignorance. That's the thing I kick myself for now more than anything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, like, I agree. Like, even the fraud, though. Yeah. Like even with the fraud, you must start uh, checkbooks. No, yeah. You must kick yourself over. Oh, the checkbooks. Oh, yeah. That, uh, that, uh, so checkbooks, right? So you know, in a checkbook, just a normal checkbook, yeah. yeah. You get a page at the back, right? That's got the the year planned out throughout on the back so you can go into a branch yeah, and you can cash a check so we printed those yeah and just so we'd go in cash a check pull out the back strip put another one in and go into another bank and cash a check yeah and all they'd do is put like a little cross in that back bit so you could use the checks books really quickly and get around like much quicker it's just like thinking it out so we'd go into bureau de changes and go and buy like buy Pesaters, uh, then you know what I mean. It weren't even euros. You go and get pesaters and just order it all back, and then just go and change it all up. So all of that stuff teaches you another thing. Even when you're swiping, you're learning like, oh, hold on a minute, I can swipe that for that, like three hundred bags, like, and you realise that some of them can go forever. And then uh, I stumbled upon interest-free credit, and uh, that for me was like that was a big one. Like I kind of. I got with a girl that was working in Barclays, right? And um, it was kind of like a bit of a serious relationship. And uh, she'd, she, there was a, she, yeah, Miss Selfridge, right? And so she'd been into Miss Selfridge. 
and she'd had a store card. So I knew what it was, but then I ended up in Topshop in Oxford Street and then there's like a sign, buy now, pay later. And once I saw that sign, I was like, what does that mean? And then everyone's so green. Like back then, people didn't know what information to give away. So the, res the girl on the, the, the cashier would just say like, look, um, you need your name, date of birth, uh, address, bank details and your work information, right? So I used, uh, I mean, I found a card that I had punched up that the name was Mr. Patel, right? So it's the only card that was in date, yeah? Um, so I go, but I, I'd watched a program on BBC Two that showed me about electoral information being stored. So I went to the library, looked up this Mr. P. Patel that lived two doors around the corner from where I lived, yeah? Um, and then jumped back on the train, went back up to Oxford Street, and I went up to the counter, filled all the form out, and I gave her the form, and she's like, you don't look like a Mr. Patel, sir. And I like, instantly, yeah, I was like, it's Patel, it's French, like that. And she was like, oh, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry, turned around, rung it through, and I got a grand to spend, yeah? But I didn't really know what I'd got. Like, I didn't, like, I'm young, I'm still, like, green to it, just not really kind of, seeing it, I come away from there, I spend the ground and buy like a pinstripe suit, yeah, from a company called Guide, I buy like some proper muggy shoes, yeah, and uh, buy like all just loads of shit, basically. Um, go go out there anyway, and then I get, uh, me and this bird, we buy a flat, so I actually bought my first flat at 17, yeah, so me and this girl, we go and buy a flat, she's obviously understanding our financial system, and I just learned like loads of stuff about banking, about how just naturally, not even just in general chit chat conversation from her. And uh, I tried to be normal, I got a job in a clothes shop, like wanted to just do the normal thing. Like was working hard, going to graft every day, keeping me nut down. And then uh, it just ended with me and her. And of course I, I'd moved, so the flat that I bought was in Wimbledon, yeah? So I'd moved right across the other side of the South. And then of course had to come back to Greenwich and then getting back into Greenwich, me mates up the road, like they're at it, he's got a nice motor. And I'm like, oh, like there's me, I've got like a poxy fiesta, yeah, thinking, car, I wanna get at it again, like, like, like I wanna make some money. And um, it just all kind of snowballed from there, really. So you end up falling back into it. And um, was there no brush, early brushes of the law that put you off? Obviously the life, well, obviously- didn't Yeah, I mean, I, got, off, so I, got, I actually got nicked on my 17th birthday for burglary. <laughs> Um, but only because we was going into a, we had this room, yeah, where we'd go and plot up and just go and play Monopoly for money of a night. Like, we'd just play for tenors, like. And uh, we got caught, me and my mate Dolphus got caught trying to break the lock off by the old bill, just blatantly on the main road. Um, so they'd always kind of stop me as a kid. Like, they always, they were different back then, police, yeah? Like, they kind of, if they saw you around the manor, they would make an approach to talk to you, like, and they knew my name, like, they knew, like all of that kind yeah, of more, stuff. They were more like local bobbies and that. Yeah. They? Well, how old are you then? I'm 46. Oh, so you're only a couple of years younger than me then? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah, good so time. yeah, you had the local <laughs> bobby. It's round our way, who, who was it? Um, Tiny. Ran right Kentish Town. Cosa called Tiny Big Lum. Um, yeah, it was always local. Like, it's different. Yeah. It's different There's a lot less community policing these days. Like, isn't if there? you get caught nicking, like, they go, right, come here, come here. Cool shit. Right, give me that. Yeah. If you get caught again, you're getting nicked. Yeah. Like you get, do you know what I mean? Like give you a slap as kids. Yeah. Like if you got caught shoplifting, they'd just take you home so you got an iron. You know, like it weren't as, as officious as it is now, is it? Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah, I think they're really different now, the police. I think they're more like, you know, like like what they say, they're officers. They're more corporate now, I think. Yeah, it's all about corporate stats yeah. now, and it's all yeah. about the staff, not about the community. Yeah, it's a more corporate thing now, and mm. I think that the, the community misses that, I think. It, it, you know, because you. Did you do a lot you of get work? A lot more. Uh, I've done 27 months in total. It's long enough, though. It's, it's long enough. But I mean, you know, my first, the first time I go away is at 22, 23. Was it all fraud you went away for? No, I only got one. I've only got one conviction for fraud, which I've got 12 months for. So that was conspiracy How much that for? fraud. There's no amount on it. So because they didn't, they didn't put an amount on it. There's no. What does that? What does that mean though? There's no amount on it. So I mean, so there's no financial amount on it. I mean, they had like in the files like that. They had like all the applications that we'd applied for. Yeah, so all of the stuff. And they said all that was that, fraud. That, yeah, they proved it. So they had to go like, so each, so I stole ID. Yeah, so they had to go, so let's say I stole your ID, they've got to go to Marvin Herbert and say, Marvin, was that you? 
Is that your gas bill? No, that's not my gas bill. Is that your driving license? No, that's not my driving license. Can you just sign now? You sign now. And they had loads of these things like when it comes to trial because we'd applied for so many applications of finance. Like when you're going out, hitting it, like, so you could, I'd go to a shopping centre, right? And I'm targeting, I'm, what I'm targeting is the finance company in the background, not the actual shop. Even though the shop's where I'm going to get the goods from, I know the finance system so well by that time that I know what they want. So I've worked out their pattern and I'll just give them what they want. And I know at the end of it, they're going to give me a five grand TV to go and pop, yeah? And it works, right? So it's a simple process of a set individual that they're looking for with a set credit profile, yeah? And they'll accept them. So that company, they would accept that one. GE Capital, they'd accept another one. Lloyd's would accept a different type of person, yeah? And so your credit rating has yeah. to be different yeah. uh, for each financial person. So you have prime, subprime, and it works the same in cars, and it works the same in mortgages, yeah? Once you understand this whole financial system, you know that once I get over 10 bags, then it gets a little bit more tricky. I went for a Bentley once, yeah, and they made me put a charge against the geezer's ass that I was going for it in the name of the person, yeah, because they like they so want to secure their asset on whatever it is, do you know what I mean? But that, what, what difference does it make to us? Yeah. It doesn't matter, I'll put the charge on, it's fine, no worries. Yeah, it doesn't make no difference, yeah, because the car's just going out, see you later. Yeah, and that's as slick as it can possibly be. And the problem is with it, right? Every single one of us uses the financial system. Whether you want to or not, you, you have to, have to yeah. interact with it. Yeah, whether you're going to rent a property, they want a credit check out. Yeah. yeah, you've got to pay deposits, you, you need to get a bank account, they've got a credit check out. So all of this stuff is recorded against us all, all the time, you know? It's a pain in the ass now, if I'm mm. honest, because... Um, so I think this uh, COVID has helped everyone out really because give everybody a bit of breathing space to get their affairs in order yeah. through this crisis because everyone's got the excuse you know like, yeah it's, everyone's fucked so Every, everyone's in trouble mate everyone's it's just fucked. yeah no, everyone's one's there. Got to say, no one can do any more than what we can do like I can't put on a seminar and invite 300 people around and generate some money I can't it's, do it's that it's crazy rich I people can't. become poor overnight at the moment yeah. Everyone, yeah. yep. equaliser. So it's just part and parcel. So we've got to continue building and growing and doing what we do the best way we can. But to to you, yeah, it's nothing. Like you've been through so much tribulations in your life, yeah. It's, it's just, just another a, thing that you take in your stride. Like, like triple D, can. Yeah. Super, 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 super. Oh. So, so I'm saying it's like doing a bit of burn, but you're on loads of restrictions. That's all it feels like. Yeah, I'm on I license, agree. but I'm just on decap release. Yeah, yeah, but you're out the door every day and going home and I just coming back to sleep every night. Out, yeah, no yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Through, man. Bombs ain't going off and people ain't dying instantly. So there ain't much to worry about. So just stay focused, stay healthy. Yeah. Stay it. healthy. You get yeah. healthy, you have lost a little bit. Yeah, you, yeah I've been inspired by you. I told you, man. I've been muscling up, mate, no, trying to get back. Christian, I'm Christmas. Yeah. 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 You've got to use Christmas as an excuse for <laughs> 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 done that during, done that during <laughs> the year. Yeah. I've got a bit of a dodgy voice today, yeah. And I don't want the viewers to think, but I've done a bit of... Well, I had to act yesterday. I was in my first acting role yesterday. Wow. So I had to be uh, a very explosive Myra Nerva all day. Oh, wow. Really, really You're not quite really as used to it these days, the voice box saying, No, it ain't used to it. Used to, like, that's what I'm saying to you. It was so used to it before, this was part of the normal. Yeah. Like, nah. <clears throat> like, it really hurt yesterday, and then today it's a bit bleak, but mm. yeah, it was good. It was a good bit of filming yesterday. So I really apologise for the voice. It was the focus, that's the new viewers as well. But um, what was that first sentence for then, Tony? Uh, <laughs> So the first sentence was uh, imitation, uh, possession of an imitation firearm with Jeez. intent to harm. Okay, and so what the so circumstances? I've been in a nightclub in South End. Uh, it's called Adlib, and like we'd been, I'd had it right off. Yeah, do you remember Adlib? Do you remember Adlib? Adlib no, I didn't so you remember where Tots is? No Tots. No. no so you got Tots. It was just up the road. I never really went to South End. Maybe once I went to South End. The only time I went to South End was with the girls. Oh, really? Yeah, I weren't really my cup of tea. Yeah, not down there. I, 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 there was a DJ at this club, Adlib, that my mate wanted to see, so we just ended up going down there one night. Um, and I'd gone... I'd, I'd gone into the club, I'd been drinking, like, my mate's driving, he says, I'll drive back the car. And I've got, like, a 2-2 uh, in the glove box, yeah, just, like, a fire, a blank fire, in, just in the glove box there. Yeah. What were you doing, carrying a... Two two in the glove box at those times. There were you doing different crimes to fraud at that, that stage. There, I kind of am sparring like like, like what Marvin said. No, not 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 selling. 
Like, I'm, I've never been into that, the drug what thing. What was that, the 80s or 90s? Uh, this is 2000, this is 1999. Yeah, so uh, late 90s, early 90s, late 90s, mid 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, it was sort of, firearms was something that you either had to be involved in or you had to have involvement in or you never really hold or held much status on the road. And it was just as simple as that. Really, would you say? Yeah, I think I was just stupid, yeah. I was just getting wrapped up in a world that I thought, just like what you said, yeah, would look after you and be there. Like, all them things that you want, like, all them kind of, it's that escalation of the next level up. Like, you're willing to go to that next level up. And um, the way I've actually looked at it recently is, I suppose, that all the stuff that happens to me as a kid, like, going through all that stuff, like, so my mum gets with this guy that beats her to a pulp regularly and I'm around all that, I hear her screaming, I see it. Like, those images that you get, they're kind of like, I go and deal with it years later, but it still doesn't go away and it still traumatizes you as you're, so all of that anger is building to a point. It's inside you. It's inside me, yeah. And I'm noticing it, like I get road rage really bad, like I've been like, ah, and I can feel it building even more. And I suppose that I want, I'm a wannabe, I wanna be at that point. I'm mm. someone who wants to be something, but, and that's all it ever is, isn't it? Like, if you look at it, what it from every well, point of it, that's of, where it is. A bit of information. You're already there. You're already that person, right? You're already that person. Mm. But the strategies you're using to reach your end goal is what's confusing you. Mm. So whether it's communicating, whether it's reacting, mm. whether it's not applying yourself, one of the friends will be tweaking to sort yourself out. Because you're not a bad person, you're not doing bad things, you're not going to a bad place. So, you're, I think in life, what I'm learning is how to put things on a different frequency mm. and how to accept things from a different perspective and how to sort of be accountable for the way I think and the choices that I make because of my programming mm. and then compare that programming to other people's programming. Mm. and then try to find a comparison in your choice making process then rather than just well I think like this I want to do it like this because that's the stuff that's always got me in a bit of bother and because of the place that you've been which is similar to mine maybe the trauma or the way we've dealt with the trauma by creating trauma because you just what seems very obvious to me is all the criminals have the same pattern yeah do you know what I mean? And they all escalate to popping point and then either turn around and make something in themselves or dive deeper into a dark hole. Yeah. And there's there's no in between, it's just that or this. So all the most sensible people that I've ever been involved with are actually straight goers now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And all the loony people like are actually junkies and mad people still at it. Do you know what I'm saying? So Yeah. It's just getting that real understanding. Yeah, I mean, it's, look, my sister, yeah? My sister's been on gear for over 30 years, mate. Like, I've seen it, I've seen it devastate her. I've seen it take, like, a beautiful girl and just suck the life out of her. Like, and, and it's kind of, cause like, it's all part of that world, but she's just riddled with trauma. Like she's got so much childhood trauma going on, you know, bad stuff happened to her as a kid. And unless they sort that part out and come to terms with it and understand it, you just can't move forward. You know, it's just impossible You've got to, to deal with these issues. You have to deal with them. Start but no one taught how to deal with them. Yeah, that's and that's the, the problem. Issue. Yeah, exactly right. Mm. I mean, so we're left to fester them. Punished, or, yeah. and when we when we explode, it's punishment, isn't it? More or punishment. You point punishment. A finger, or, like for argument's sake, from the eighties, nineties, any kid that has been abused was an outcast if they even mentioned any sort of nonsense. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I got brought up with a few kids that got sort of um, abused as a kid. Um, and it's... The kids was always me made to feel like they'd done something wrong. Do you know what I mean? And I think when I got asked to go back home 
So I got asked, those, they said to me, you can return, you can return the job with the children you don't mind, would you want to go back home? I think they actually done that because they couldn't get me. Mm. And they knew I'd get on them. Because a couple of times I said to the bird, you, you take gear. I said, what are you talking about? I said, you, you have a boot. I said, what are you on about? I said, you have a boot, you're pinned up, mate. What have you had? And they're like, what are you on about? What are you on about? Mm. Well, they might have had a, uh, a morphine-based pill or a bit of gear. She's got on it. And I've seen the other keeper, like, his eye, like, his eyes were massive, like, mm. his pupils were dilated massive, do you know what I mean? And I'm like, what have you had? He's like, what? I said, you're on speed, you're in here. Because you sort of work out with me, he's always running about like a fairy, and I was like, you're fucking on speed. <laughs> you talk massive, but your eyeballs, man, they're massive. Mm. You think I'm stupid, isn't it? And then I'm getting on little things in the home as a kid growing up, so then I started, then they asked me to go home, so, I don't know, three or four of the kids I grew up with, one of them killed himself and the other two are really troubled. And it's because the kids was always made to feel like they'd done something wrong. They had nowhere to turn and they were the bad kids. Do you know what I mean? It was nuts, that part of that 90s and that moment. So quickly getting back to the nightclub incident, with the two, you've got the two two in the glove compartment and then mm. what's gone on with that? Did they bring coming so in the Yeah, so in the club, um, there's a bottle on the floor, there's a Budweiser bottle on the floor, yeah, so I bent down to pick the Budweiser bottle up, but once I've picked the Budweiser up, obviously I've had a drink, yeah, so I'm a little bit like, woo, and uh, I picked the Budweiser bottle up, and I feel like, like I'm a little bit like that, the doorman just grabbed me out of nowhere, and in my throat like this, three of them all wrapped around me, bang, bang me in off the, the door, and just literally just threw me out the side door like that, and I was like, what is that for? Like, I don't even know what I've been thrown out. So I'm like, why are you throwing me out? So he said, you're drunk. I said, like, come here to get drunk. What are you talking about? Like, so then he says, uh, oh, you're stumbling about. We can't have that in there. I said, look, my mate's in there. Can I just get my mate out of the club, please? Yeah. And he goes, and he pushed me. Like, he was like, go away. Like, I said, come on, mate, don't do that. Yeah. I said, look, I just want my mate. I just want my mate. Yeah. And he said, what's your mate's name? I'll get your mate out of the club. So give him my mate's name. He says, he goes and calls him out in the tanner. 10 minutes later, my mate's there, because he's got the keys from the car, right? So I'm fuming, like I'm building up because I'm like, I'm embarrassed to be thrown out of the club. There's like, I'm quite, like, I'm like, oh, I just want to get away from here, yeah? And it's just building. And then I go back, I say, mate, can you just get in? He went, I told you once, and he slapped me around my face, Shut yeah? Up. That's what he done, yeah? He slapped me like I was a girl, bruv, yeah? So I'm like, wow, did he really just do that? Like, yeah. and now, like, my anger has just come in. I know the thing's in the glove box, right? So I'll go down to the car, I'm booting at the 190 Cosworth, right? And I was kicking the wind out, it wouldn't go through, I was booting it, it wouldn't go through, it wouldn't go through, and then my mate come down and went, look at you, you ain't gonna do nothing, just get in the car and we go home, yeah? So I, I, he's opened the car, I opened the sat in the thing like that, so I went, one minute, one minute, and I had a bottle of cover and a quarter of gear, right, just shoved around like underneath the seat. So I took the gear out, I went, <laughs> and then popped the cover, <laughs> Do, 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 and then just opened the glove box. He went, what are you doing? I went, I'm going to go and show him, yeah? And I just put the thing there, bottle in my hand. I've got all powder around my nose, yeah? And, like, I've seen it on CCTV the next day, so I see myself walking up the hill. <laughs> it's horrible. I felt so embarrassed, yeah? So I'm walking up the hill, and I can just see the geezer getting, like, all proper, like, yeah, what? You're coming back, you're coming back, yeah? So I just backed it like that, yeah? I said, yeah, come on in, what? Like, I said, you all think you're bad now? Bang! Like that. And the first thing, everyone goes, whoosh! And just is off, yeah? Like, I think I'm Rambo, don't I? Like, I think I'm having it. Like, ah! But not realising that this is actually, like, this Serious. is bad. Like, what you're doing is terrible. Like, you're absolutely petrifying all these people. And now scattering them. Let it off again. Bang, 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 bang. Let it off. And then all I hear is, put a gun down! Arm um, response. And I look down and I can see the dots, yeah? So whoever's called the old Bill, kneel down, gun on the back on one finger, then they just rushed in, grabbed me, and then I woke up in the cell the next day, yeah? Busting for a wee. So I'm on the thing like, hey, why am I even here? Like, why am I even here? Like, what's going on, what's going on? And then he comes to let me out, I've weed in the cell anyway, so I can't wait, yeah? So he comes and he says, um, Carl, you was naughty last night. I said, was I? Like, was I? He says, yeah. Like, and then he goes, come on, look at this. He goes, I'll get you a cup of tea and one of them box breakfast, he comes back. And uh, he shows me the CCTV and I'm just like, oh no, right. That was a total realization that it's in me. Because for a moment I thought that gun was real, right? And that means that 
I've got the capability of doing that. I've got that pop that's just gone off in my head that I'm like, ah, oh, like, and that kind of fun life out of me. Like, even like, I was, uh, bye, see you later. I'm leaving the police station thinking nothing of it, thinking like it's not going to be that bad, yeah, because I'm not like, I've not got that criminal record of like, they haven't caught me that many times for anything, yeah, so I'm not known to them now. Um, and my barrister was like, yeah, you'll get. 15 months, it's an imitation firearm with intense farm. I was like, what? 15 months? This is just before they, you remember gun shops could sell blank firearms, do you remember, yeah? Like, it's just before they changed the law. If that would have happened after, I'd have been stuffed, mate, I'd have gone. Yeah, I was going to say, 15 lose. months sounds good. Yeah, I was, I, like I, mate, I thanked the judge. Like, when he gave yeah. me 15 months, I was like, thank you, thank you so much, thank you. And like, I just looked at my missus, I was like, I'm sorry, like, she was pregnant, my wife was pregnant when I went away that time, so. Yeah. And um, so how long did you end up serving? Like seven and a half months? Uh, I served a bit longer. Okay. Oh, oh, so, no, you're only meant to do seven and a half months, yeah. but I've got arrested for having a skipping rope. Skipping rope. Oh. So, oh, it escaped. Exactly. Oh, yeah. no. So, like, one of my mates is in there, yeah, like on the same bit as us. So, you've got like Razor I'm Smith. Yeah. All right, thank uh, you. I'm all right, thank you, mate. Um, you've got like Razor Smith here, you've got my mate. Jamie, who's over here, right? Did you say Razor Smith? Razor Smith, Noel Razor Smith. Okay, yeah, yeah so yeah. I was on the same spur as Noel, yeah. on the life of spur, yeah? So you've got Noel there, and you've got my like my mate Jamie, who's also not a lifer, but they put them on our spot one when you're just going away for the first time, yeah? So uh, Jamie's over there, I'm like, I'm allowed to walk about because I work on the yards, yeah? So they give you, they allow you a bath and all that, yeah? So I like, popped his cell, I'm like, you right, Jamie? Like that, he's skipping. He's got the bed sheet. It's amazing, yeah, what he's done with the bed sheet. I said, that's a really good idea, yeah. I'm going to die in the car. Oh, God. Right? Oh, so, so I'm, I'm thinking, right, I, I want to do that. So I get back. I get, you know, you've got the, f the f they call them feeder cunts, yeah? Uh, sorry, I'm going to swear, but um, these trainers that are blue with the, you know the ones I mean, yeah? So you take the, I took the laces out, I tied this thing, I made the wickedest rope, yes. Wow. Skipping. Skipping, skipping every night. I'm skipping in the cell, getting fit. Like, like oh, this is lovely. PO comes, pops my flap. All right, just check in. Yeah, night shift. Bam, pops the thing. That, I think nothing of it. Next day, I go out on the bins. Yeah, and I'm like walking around the bins, and uh, I see the security screw. Uh, his name was Skemmel. Yeah, uh, from Belmarsh. Like, he's horrible. Yeah, so he's come, he's come out with his cronies, and he's like, which one sells? So I'm, I'm sitting down smoking a roll up right by the compactor by the bin, yeah, and I'm thinking, the missus is gonna, she's gonna have a baby. Like, this is what it's gonna be, she must be. Like, so I'm like, he says, come back to the ass block with us. So I go back to the ass block. I ask her, I'm asking him all the way, is my missus all right? Is my missus all right? Like, is everything all right? Is everything all right, Gov? Is everything all right? He's like, yeah, 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 everything's all right with that. And as I walk into the PO, the wing PO's office, on the table is the rope, yeah? So I just laughed. Like, I just laughed about it, because I'm not trying to escape, but he says, do you realise the seriousness of this? There's only one other prison that you can go to from here, and that'll be Whitemore, and you'll be off. Yeah, and I'm thinking, is this, like, what is he going on about? Like, this is just a rope. And I said, I've been skipping. A PO see me from the other wing over there. So he said, right, you've got to go for adjudication. So then they took me off the yards, so I have to go for adjudication. And... Um, he gave me, in the adjudication, he said to me, I've never been in there before, so you know you get the two screws up behind you with the foots on the back of this. This is Belmarsh's block, right? So you've got the screws with the, the foots on the back of the seat, and I'm shoved right in like this, right into the thing. So he's got the governor, number two governor, right? he's got the, um, the rope there, and he says, well, how'd you plead? I said, plead to what? He said, uh, trying to escape. I said, not guilty, you're not guilty. Like, I'm not, why would I plead to that? I was skipping. I, he said, get up and skip, yeah? <laughs> So the rope, yeah, is 13 foot, right? But I'm six foot two, right? I wrapped it once around my arm there, once around my arm there, and holding it, that's the equal size that I need to swing the thing round, right? That's how long it is. So I get up, I think I'm Muhammad Ali, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Skipping. He's like, sit down, he goes, a month's loss of earnings, a month's loss of remission, a month's loss of canteen, two weeks GOAD in the block, yeah? And I'm like, what? Like, for what? I'm just, like, I'm fuming again. And I was just, oh, my God, I haven't even done anything wrong. And so the baby was due just before my date, yeah? I would have got out, and then the baby was due. Now he's given me a month longer, and it's gone over. So I'm, now I'm going to miss the birth as well, right? So I, I was fuming. What? 
<laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> no, no, definitely that, not. That, 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 that word of skip me won't. Yeah. Yeah. A bit of rope, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it was a skip rope. I've never known a thing for a skip rope. Yeah, but like you've got a voice, big voice. Yeah, yeah but listen, <clears throat> no, but look, listen. <clears throat> I'm six no, foot no. two. Listen, Double the rope is twelve foot four. Listen, no. Once round here, yeah. No. Once round here, you're into thirteen listen, foot, definitely. This is what you told the others. This is what I told. Uh, this is how it was. Right. It's a bed sheet, Marv. It can't be any longer than where it is. Eight foot is long, bro. An eight foot skipping rope is long. No, it ain't. Do you want to bet? In lengthwise, it'll be bet? two foot taller than me. So if yeah, I half it, I've now got a skipping rope. Well, that's the, he's put yeah, the, but I'm not a pro like you that needs a rope that, that like. He put the grafting concept. <laughs> 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 uh, that's what the security guy, uh, know, the security screw said. Though. I was trying to escape. Thirty. No, you know a skipping rope. Listen, let me explain something, chat. Right? From my knowledge, a skipping rope that I've known has never been thirteen foot long. It's not a proper skipping rope. Oh, you've you know, got, I've made it. I understand. I've made it. I understand. Yeah. I understand. That. Yeah. So, from a man that understands <laughs> skipping rope, right? Yeah. I've never known anybody that's had a length of rope or cord thirteen foot long to skip with. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And I've skipped. I've skipped. But I've skipped since I was nine years of age, right? And I can honestly say I had the wickedest range of skipping ropes you could ever have in the world from cross rope, right? And not one of them was over 10 foot long. You know what I mean? Like, but this is a bed sheet in a prison, yeah? yeah? And I've, I've only oh, got I, 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 four I, I, months I, left. I, like, there's no point in me even I, trying I, to, I, to, to escape. I done, is it? Oh, we're gonna do a Yankee. We're gonna do a Yankee. That's what we escape with bed sheets, because that's what you can escape with. And what they do, you plait the bed sheets together. That's to what I done. It. Yeah. Come on, that's a rope. No, no. A hand, I'm listen. I'm not denying that it's a rope. I'm saying that it's. I made a proper badass rope, mate, with the ties from the things in it and everything. But I pro and I worked on the yard. Listen, let me finish, yeah. But and I worked, worked on the yards, yards right? So this it. is what the, this is what the security at, guard said. He said, the outside, he said red, wrapped it around your feet. Exactly, on, man, exactly what he said. And I was, I was dim. Yes, I was like, oh, I just didn't see it like that. I no, was I'm just guilty, That's guilty, guilty, guilty. And that's what they done. So I didn't, uh, you know, I do the two weeks. I mean, that was funny as well. Getting the cell, yeah. Just literally getting the block cell, yeah. DST, bang, E-man suit. Come I'm on. like, oh my god, that's what right, yeah. patches, yeah. So now I had to wear patches. I was only in patches for a month, yeah. I was, I was, because it's true what I was saying, yeah. He, so you know, the next day they come around to see you in the block. Yeah, the governor comes to see you, the same governor, yeah, we go, yeah. right? They come see you. So when he's cut off, just let off on him, yeah. I let him have it. I wrote a seven-page letter to the prison's ombudsman, yeah, because I was like, this is. Not, I, I get it now. I get it, and it's funny, yeah, because exactly like what you say, you mad bastard. What are you doing, yeah? I was stupid. I really was because I'm naive. In, I, I'm just not thinking like that. I just genuinely wasn't. I swear on my kid's life, I was not trying to escape. I was not trying to help anyone else escape. This is what they said. You're having no, it with, no, with one of no, the first double A no, cats in the country. No, yeah, no, I'm no, sure no, that you're. <laughs> no razor, right? He's on his spurs. Yeah. Like, fine. <laughs> the rope on his spur. Like, what would you oh. expect to happen? Yeah, like, but what would you expect though? Like, yeah, it's, you know what I mean, it's like, mad, man. It's come mad, on, man. It's just life. Yeah, it is, and and it was a stupid thing to do. I mean, um, you know, and it cost you dearly. Obviously, you missed the the birth of your child. You I say didn't no. Oh, so didn't. so so yeah, I was I was doing something called an ETS course, right? Enhanced I've thinking done that school. in our field. Yeah, that good stopped course. Me, that stopped me from being a football bug. Yeah, I really like that. I course. stopped going football after. And they took it course. out now. You know, they don't do it no more in prisons. Yeah, Shut I up. said to them, why would you take that out? So they used to call the schools. Get that. Yeah, no, you know I've what? said the same that thing. Is, that is the that. I've talked about this course before, right? The ETS course. It stopped me from going to football. Because I never went to football for football. I went to football for violence and crime, right? And after I'd done that ETS course, I never went. I, know, I went to one football match after in Barcelona, New Camp. Went back that, room. Yeah, that was, that was the last football <laughs> match I went to. But, yeah. Yeah, it's a good ETS course. Yeah, yeah, so it's a good course where you get to play role play and you play yeah, other people's parts and all that. Play, yeah, that, exactly play. the same for well, me, right? Like, gave oh, like yeah, it makes you see other people's yeah, perspectives. Yes, yeah, wow. Wounded me. Wounded and um, me. <clears throat> I was doing that. And then uh, because of the, the rope, that all flopped. 
I then get moved to Brixton. I have a like I get I so I've got some I'd got done for speeding, unbeknownst, yeah. My wife's mum died, right? So on the day of the funeral, I get in the morning, Sal's, you're out. So I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to the funeral. Like, and, and you know, everyone says, oh, they've got suits in reception and all that. Yeah, there ain't no, I've never seen no suits in reception. I didn't go to a funeral either. They took me to Camberwell Court, yeah? And I was like, are you sure I'm meant to be here? Like, where, I've left all my stuff in Belmarsh because I think I'm going back to Belmarsh because I think I'm going out just for the funeral. Um, and then they moved me to Brixton, yeah? But that was the best possible thing that could have happened because shortly into the sentence in, in Brixton, when I got into Brixton, they come to see me, they had a thing there called E-Wing, which was like where you got to, it was like a DCAT and it was open, yeah? So where I've been through all this E-Man stuff, they come and interviewed me for it. I thought, I'm never ever gonna get it, yeah? And he said, I believe you. He said, I'm gonna give you a chance, I believe you. And I thought, oh, great, great. <laughs> And then on the first day I worked in the officer's mess, yeah? So on day one, I go out with this other guy who's come over from the same wing, C-wing with me, called Gary. We both go out the door and he goes, I'm going. I went, what? He said, I'm going, man. He said, bro, I've been away for three years. I need a bunker. <laughs> he went, I'm going. And I was like, oh my God, what do you mean you're going? He said, just give me 15 minutes. Just sit in the toilet for 15 minutes, yeah? And that was it, he was off, mate, like he was gone. And, and then, so then they come in and they're like, oh, he's gone, now you have to go back to the wing. But I got my tag from now. Like, they tagged me, they allowed me out on tag. So I've got, I literally got out and Zach was born like a week later. Okay, so you're lucky. Yeah, I was lucky, yeah. Right, yeah, mad. Just like that whole sentence was just like a proper mad sentence. Like, in just and such a short was it? amount of time. 15 uh, months? Yeah, 50, yeah, 15 and months. you've done no other sentences after that? Uh, I've done a 12 month after that. 12 month, 15 months. So you've done well then, really, didn't you? Yeah, I've done quite you've well. You've yeah. some quick, man. Definitely. I, I, but, so there's a, so, when I get done, f so I'm hitting TVs in Sheffield when I get called for fraud, yeah? Um, plasma screen TVs. So what was the biggest cash day, the biggest payday you had out of your game? My bit. Yeah, what was, what was like, like as, as a group, you eat them, like, and then your bit? I suppose in one lump, probably about, in one move, yeah, probably be about 4M in one move well, your, to come out. Your, your, your what? Yeah, because I changed what I was doing. Like when I was, so there's a period when I was younger, yeah? So what, what I'm saying to you, what, you got 4M yourself? No, no, my oh. bit, no, maximum my bit, probably out of one move it's probably about 100 bags i suppose out of one move um well, was the biggest move i ever had was 340 grand mm. and i don't know many people that have had a, a touch but yeah there's a load of people that talk about that's my whack that isn't it yeah I mean. yeah because that's how it is like you if you're working in a crew like in the end that what i've done was i figured out mortgage fraud right so i figured out dodgy slizzers like that let's get a let's get a dodgy slizzer Let's create some mortgage offers, yeah? Let's draw them all down and that he can just go, yeah? And we split the cash. So I was lucky I got into a position where I knew someone that worked in a mortgage company and their job was to take the mortgage offers off of the fax machine and deliver them to the other people that were in the office for them to go and complete the drawdown. So I just took them ones and worked out that I could now change the conveyance into solicitor's details to one that I've got control of I don't even need to raise the, the mortgage offers anymore and we can just draw down the funds over here. But like that, like those moves, like they're calculated moves that take time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's all kind of smart calculating how to, it's all just using the system back. Look, I've got a mortgage when I was 17. I understood the process from back then. So I understand what's a drawdown? Like, oh, what is that? Oh, it's when the bank are gonna give the funds to the solicitor and the solicitor can give that to the vendor. Oh, right. And once you've been through that post, we know that because we've been through those processes, right? But learning it to manipulate it, like, just kind of, it was just, I don't know, I'm wired that way to do that stuff, definitely. Right. So once you got into the mortgage stuff, that's when you started seeing big money, wasn't it? This, uh... Yeah, you kind of see, yeah, you see a lot more money than we're seeing. Don't get me wrong, yeah? 10 plasma screens a day, yeah? That's yeah. 30 grand a day. Cool. consistently for years yeah the plasma's years. so expensive right? years yeah years no one can get near me like that ever yeah and I say it in the book I talk about it I say look you think it might be a minute scam go and do your maths 
Yeah. You work out 30 grand in TVs that you're selling. Like, after knock, yeah, I was, I was like Amazon. Yeah, that's how reliable I was, 24 hours. You give me your order, come back with it, mate. There it is, yeah? All round here, like driving in here today. So what was the deal you used to do for people then? Um, if, for example, Marvin ordered one of these six grand plasma Three bags. Sp- 50, 50, 50, 50, half the price, yeah? So Rolex watch, he wants a 10 grand Rolex watch, no worries. Come so back I bet you weren't tomorrow. short of... Uh, customers then at that time yeah, uh, like I only so I had three people that I dealt with mainly yeah because you don't like to go out like obviously my mates would say oh bro can you get me a TV or like oh I need one of those nice new kitchens from that Swedish furniture store yeah like and we could get it but I wouldn't want to do them like that's hard work like so I wouldn't want to do them as, unless everything else flopped you know yeah I mean? like and so at times when you had access to these credit cards and stuff like this, there must have been some great nights out you must have had with your mates when you've gone and bought the bar or there must have been some great holidays or anything like this. You tell us about some exo- <laughs> yeah, so you some. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of always drinking, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? Like, when you can just give someone a card and go, yeah, look, swipe it through for free grand, Bob. Like, yeah, yeah, it's gone through to you. Like, oh, it didn't go through. I'll try that one. Try that one. Try that one. Try that one. Like, try that one. Try that one. Oh, yeah, sweet. Like, now, nah, oh, yeah, don't worry. They're with me. Just let them drink. Like, and then like, so to even down to like bars and stuff, yeah, my mate, one of my mates owned a few bars. I kitted out like his whole bar. Like I got him like all the plasmas, like all the chairs, like all the different bits and pieces. And it like, I got him a diamond ring for his missus. He bought his diamond ring off me, yeah? For his, his missus engagement thing. And then got found out about oh, it. I was gonna say, hopefully she doesn't know. Yeah, no, she knew. Cause he got, he, he bought a dad, a Rolex off me, yeah? That it then, so, just like any stolen Rolex, if you then go into the shop, even though it's brand spanking new, I'm yep. giving it to you, yep. it's still going to be reported stolen, right? So he then goes to get his Rolex watches, you have to have them serviced. There's a register for all this yes, stuff. Yes, the ones that bought fraudulently are yeah. s- still stolen the same Yeah, way. they're yeah, stolen, okay. man. They're gone, I know, because he got arrested. Yeah, yeah, no. So like, he gets arrested for it, and then like my mate had to like, obviously go, oh, I didn't know. Well, he did a little bit, so everyone knows now he didn't know. <laughs> So uh, yeah, like it's kind of you always get them big yeah. bits of of dough, and you enjoy holidays. Like I rented out uh, Buena Vista Link in Florida. Yeah, I rented it all out. That's me and my family. Yeah, and we just jet skied, water skied. Like you can see it on the Vice documentary when I'm water skiing yeah. on the Vice documentary. Yeah. Like and then there's the the rings with my mum. Just having like I suppose I'm trying to buy family time. I'm trying to. Memories, isn't it? Yeah. Memories. So I was, yeah. That's what it's about, isn't it? I created as many memories as I could when I had dough. And that's yeah. what it's about, I think. Memories no are the one thing you can take. No yeah. matter how much graft we had over the gamma, I always take, right, this is what, I'm going to do this with the kids, I'm going to do it. No, no, I'm, I'm not here, I'm away with the kids. So I was always away doing things with my kids. Yeah. All the summer holidays, all the Christmas holidays and all that. I know for all my kids, all the, all the, most of their lives when I was out of jail, do you know what I mean? Mm. It's about trying to create that's the best. memories. That's you know the mean? best. Yeah, because like you grow, you know, as you're growing up, you've got the memories of it as well, and you've got like, you know, I, I took my kids have been to Florida, they've been to Kenya, they've like I got married in Kenya, like there's, you know, like there's too many places to list. Like and nowadays, yeah. I get to travel even more did for you pay work. Paid the trip with a dodgy credit card? I didn't actually. I paid for well, it with dodgy money that I got through the credit cards. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's a, it's a totally different, um, it's a totally different game now. Yep. So uh, um, I've listened to one of your other interviews. I heard you mention about you're out working with the guys and on the way back, one of the boys has told you, he got a phone call and he said to you that he'd ticked mm. a kilo of cocaine, washed mm. it up, end up smoking the whole thing. Mm. A little on the way back, you weren't going to help him, then you got another phone call and you decided to help him and then that sort of introduced you to organised crime? Uh, kind of, so... He smoked a clear crack. Yeah, man, he washed it up, bro. He'd done the whole box. How? How long? It must have took him a month. I don't know how long, either, but he was so. So what happened was, yeah, there's like the guy who's like the guy who introduced me is actually in jail now for like he, he's away for murder. Yeah, so like when he was out, he he so this guy, I'm doing my thing, doing my TVs, yeah, TVs. I'm going miles out, like I'm I'm nice. Remember, like I'm thinking, right, this is all good don't need to worry about nothing yeah um and then a few about must have been about a week before my mate had run me and said i'm collecting debts now t yeah if like you know anyone that like 
owes any money or anything, like, I'll just let me know and I'll go and collect the money for yourself. Like, all right, mate, I don't know anyone. Like, everyone I deal with, like, is cash. Like, they're old, kind of, like, older guys that have been fencing for years and they want it, like, they've got all the customers, right? So, I am um, trying to think what happens. Right, so, I'm coming back in the van and he says to me, um, he says, uh, I've got a problem, Bob. So I said, yeah, uh, like, what's up? He said, oh, do I know such and such? So I said, yeah, I've heard of him. So I said, like, one of the other guys that used to work for me, yeah, had had problems with him. He'd robbed him, like, years before, like, a massive load of gear. Um, so obviously I knew who the guy was that he owed money to, right? So I said, like, how much have you, how much have you had off him? He said, I took a box of white off him. So it was 70 bags, yeah, that's how much it was then. So, like, I don't know, like, I've never bought a box myself, so I wouldn't know. Um, what year was that? Uh, uh, I'm not sure of the year. I don't know. 90s or 2000s? It's 2000, something. Early? Yeah, early, early. So yeah. I mean, between 25 and 32. Yeah. But, like, I don't know how far this other guy is up the chain. I, like, I know his name, I know he's a naughty character, that's for sure, yeah? Um, so I don't know this with this guy I don't know this yeah so my mate gets chored on a robbery yeah a wrap up right and this guy has left a blade in the house that's got my mate's that my mate ain't even been there I don't think yeah it's got his dabs on it yeah and now he's away for it but this one's out right so in the morning if my mate finally gets hold of me yeah and says like have you can you and listen, make sure you look after him because he's fucking, he's fucking up. So I was like, right, okay. So he says, oh, look, he's been round to my mum's and he's gone up in my bedroom. He's took artwork from my bedroom. He's took, yeah, he's banging Olsen stereo and he's took his, uh, um, his car, right? His M3. The next thing he showed up at my house, he wants to go down to Woolworth Road to go cash converters to go put all this stuff in cash converters. Just my mate who's in jail, yeah? So I like don't want no part of it. I totally want out of it, like not involved in it. And he's like, look, bro, please, please, please. So anyway, I go with him. And from that, it led on to me doing bits and pieces with him, yeah? Until we're what? in the van. Why did you go with him though? Um, Cause it's my mate's stuff, yeah? So the guy that's away is my mate. Right, yeah. So you let your other felt, mate sell all the gear. Yeah, but I, at that point, I don't know it's his stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. I don't know it's, it's his stuff. I, all I'm concerned about is the car. That's why I went with him. Yeah, because like I know my mate's a car kind of say it's M3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking he would never let no one drive his M3. He ain't let. He ain't like that. He ain't that guy to just give someone the keys to go and drive it. He ain't gonna let no one drive that car. And um, it was so I think at the time it's just the artwork and the stereo is going back. He's just, it's his. I don't realise until I get that phone call, which is after when Johnny takes me to the thingy, yeah? We can say his name because he's in the book anyway. So when, when then I then start working with Johnny, yeah? Obviously I'm feeding like Robert, yeah? Like I'm giving him, looking after him, like his missus and all that because I've got him with him, working with me, yeah? So when he then says to me on the way back in the van, Look, man, can you help me, bruv? Please, man, I owe this guy this money. Like, and he's, the guy has threatened him. He said, I'm going to burn your fucking mum and dad's house out if, unless you give me the money today, yeah? He hasn't told me any of this stuff, yeah? Just in the van on the way back. So I was like, bloody hell. Um, let me ring my mate. So I ring my mate and he says, um, like, what's his name? So I give him my name. He says, who's the owe the money to? So I told him, yeah? So he says, give me five minutes, yeah? Puts the phone down. And then... Uh, Five minutes, less than five minutes, three minutes later, he's run me back, gives me an address to go to in Catford, yeah? He says, just go there, yeah? I need to talk to you, bro, I'm serious, yeah? Take, go there now. So I head there, so there's me, uh, my brother, my brother-in-law, and him, right? Uh, and we just head, like, I've got this old red, uh, red van, yeah? Like, it's like, you know them big old square, like, ones like that? So just get to the thing. We get to the, the, the place and I see all these, guys get out, I see a couple of them with straps and then they go in to this yard place, yeah, and like, I, he goes to me, he says, this this guy's name ain't such and such, is there? and I was like, yeah, he goes, I owe him three grand as well, and now I'm thinking, oh no, like, what is going on here, yeah, like, I'm not, this is not my situation, and then I went in and we just sat down, I just sat down and he said, like, this, this geezer's a shitbag, like he says, like the main guy says to me, like he's a shitbag. 
Like, why are you with this piece of shit? Like, he's a piece of shit. So I'm like, he's just been working with me. Like, I, you know, he's got like, I'm looking after him. I say about my mate, my other mate, and he goes, he's a shit bag as well. Yeah, he, like, cause he knows him, he goes, he's a shit bag as well. Like, he goes, why aren't you a shit bag? And I'm like, now I'm thinking, I'm in this thing, like, I've got involved in something just to try and help someone out. Yeah, cause I've got my, gone and done my two penneth worth. And um, I just said, look, give me a minute, give me a minute. And then, I just sat down with him and it would just be like sitting down with you, Marv, and saying, look, yeah, what are you going to do with this guy? Like, you, what are you going to do with him? Give me three days, I've got a move that I can do with him, yeah, and I can get you the money, yeah? And that's how I sold it to him. But of course, once he see that I could do that, like, he's like, ooh, yeah, that's kind of like, ooh, I like you. I like and come here. Go. Like, and then like, you ain't letting me go. Nah. Yeah, you ain't letting me go. Like, but, I built a relationship with him. Like I built like a, a relationship over the years with him. So is that you helping him a lot of the time for obviously your skills in the fraud game? Yeah, there's a lot of people like that, man. Like he'll tell you, like if you could have got me back then, he'd have loved me, of man. Course, Trust me, Mark would have been like, come here, you, like I definitely. Fully imagine, like, yeah. no one's gonna want to let go of you, like these hardened criminals. They see, like this guy's a cash yeah. machine. Yeah, he, he goes out and he gets cash. Yeah, and I'm a grafter. Yeah, like, I make it happen. Yeah, and that's once you yeah, can. There's all that running do. debts up. And <laughs> problems, like, so what? Yeah. Like, I'm until I'd say I was 30, I don't think I ever paid a parking ticket fine or anything. Like Still don't pay parking tickets now, mate. Don't pay none. <laughs> Do my idiot. I'm starting to try it's in the pay book, it, man. Read it in the book. I, like, I actually split up with a bird over that. Yeah, because the geezer used to hide. I hate it. Like, I hate it. Like, I who hate owns the lease it. on the earth? Like, why have I got to pay to, what, yeah. don't I pay enough in taxes? Like, how much stuff, that like, they just want to cripple you, these people. Yeah. And then send people around your ass to bully you up to get the money. No, I'm saying I'm not a fan of them. <laughs> not having it. Not having it, yeah. yeah I'm, not, I'm not a fan of them, I must admit. So. Yeah, it does my, it's my little bugbear where that is. You know, traffic orders. Yeah. Still my little bite today. Yeah, I still have a little bite. <laughs> Me too. And I said, I've got no issue with the police or anything like this because they do a really good service and stuff like this. But the yeah. parking people, they get a job that's purely causing misery for people, do you know? I know, obviously, we shouldn't park where we want and should buy <laughs> Yeah, I get but, it, but like at the same time, then make it accessible for drivers as well. If you're a driver, where I live in London, it's quite awkward. Like they're putting bus lanes that are everywhere, and there's more people. But everyone's got COVID, so do you want us to go in the car, or do you want us to like? Yeah. How do we do this? Like, no, it's crazy time. Quite yeah, crazy. it's crazy time. So, um, once you got sort of intertwined with this serious criminals at that point, mm. obviously things I'm sure must have got a lot darker. Yeah, and did you, come, did you deal with violence at all in your? Like the criminal life, but did you see violence? Yeah, I saw or? lots of violence. I saw like, because obviously you're around it, so there's different types of violence going on, and like that environment breathes it. Like you just can't, like you just, because there's someone always got a problem somewhere, there's something, someone's not happy, someone's not going to be happy about something, yeah, well, he lost out on that, and now he's having a go at him over it. And then nine times out of ten, it's just egos spiraling out of control and just, just arguing with each other. That's all it is ever. Yeah. That's all it is ever yeah. been. Just people's limbic system going nuts. Everybody has to have the last word. Yeah. It's nuts. And that's one thing I just look at now and I watch and I think, how mad was I? And I actually look like bewildered at the man I used to be, I think I think it is. Bewilderment. I think how could I used to think I was so sensible? You just don't see it. Yeah, it's a real, it's mad. Mad. yeah, it's a real mad one, isn't it? Life is, and just what you got to go through to learn what you need to become. It just, just uh, this world, mate. I never expected to go where I've been. Tell me that. I expected some of it, but none of the goodness. I mean, like the mm. good stuff that's happened to me, I never expected it all year. I've always thought my life was going to be full of misery and pain. Mm. Till the day I die, till the day I took one in them out. Man. Crazy. So um, what about you? Like Mum said, when he obviously got one in the night, did you ever uh, suffer any violence? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've been what, stabbed twice. And what were the circumstances? Why with this? Because you caught fraudsters don't get caught up nah, in I was thing, a kid though, where I lived, man. I, like, where I lived, all the kids had... You were 11 though, weren't you? Huh? Was you 11 kid? Yeah, man, yeah. come on, bro, you know I was. Cheeky, right. cheeky. Yeah, I was always cheeky. Even now I'm cheeky. No, you, man, I'll always be cheeky. He said to me the other day, I'm going to give you a body shot for that one. <laughs> I can't... Sometimes it's the cheeky mind just takes over and you can't help it, innit? It's just like, I was that kid that was just cheeky. Yeah, 
yeah, no, I can so, uh, slightly relate. But only ever jokingly. Like, you know what I mean? I there's no maliciousness like, behind it. Yeah, just, there's no. Like, and I'm not a violent fun. person at all, like, and I'm, I'm just not that way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, anyway, once you sort of got involved with this firm and stuff there, did, how did you ever get away from that stuff? Did you regret getting involved with them or like, rather been independent? I kind of suppose I was like. I kind of kept a distance, but I didn't keep a distance, yeah? Like, I, I, like, I, so I smoked weed, yeah? And uh, like, I smoke it, like, they were Jamaican, right? So they're Jamaican guys, yeah? Um, idle, I'm an idleist, yeah? So that means I don't put no tobacco yeah. with my weed, yeah? I'm just smoking it pure. Like, and they were fascinated, like, this white kid is smoking skunk like that. Like, and just acting normal, because, like, th that fascinated them. They loved all that stuff. Um, we just built relationships that were different like I took them parted we done lots of partying and I suppose you build you become more friends don't you more of like a closed unit like and then the debts come from outside yeah and so I'm just the one that would resolve resolve it yeah like or facilitate facilitate, facilitate yeah, yeah exactly resolve. yeah facilitate exactly right yeah. yeah um I would facilitate everything happening and that's what I done and then Everything comes to an end, don't it? Do you know what I mean? Everything, like, eventually. Yeah, eventually everything comes eventually, to an end. everything has to come to an end. Yeah, I had some good times. We've done pirate radio. Like we, we, what was your pirate radio? Uh, it was called Pure Chronics. It was 104 FM. Like It was massive. We had so many like listeners. It was huge. Yeah, yeah When DTI ra raided us, they said... Ice and exposure. Oh, yeah? And, I remember um, Ice. I remember Ice. ice. There was a couple of others as well. Ice. Well, I can't remember what an exposure one was. That was fun. Radio is fun, like talking to the airways, talking to other people. Like um, that was literally just for fun. Was there any monetary to get any money out of it? Well, I, like, I've always been a bit entrepreneurial, like yeah. so. F you know, we had forty DJs all paying forty quid a week. Okay, yeah. Um, and then of course you get dues, uh, and then you put on a do. Yeah, yeah. And no. You get the money from the do. Uh, I never really exp I only explored that twice. I never really went down that road. I was more into that. I just liked it. Do you know what I mean? But we had everyone in that. In that, we had a little. Like a little, uh, uh, what are they called? Do you know the cargo containers? We had a yep, container yeah, of course. that we just kitted out. And I mean, everyone was in there. Rat Pack come there, and like, yeah. like they had a lot of people come there, you know, over yeah. the years. Nice. And um, so at a certain point, you ended up getting caught some of your frauds and ended up being on the run for six years. Like, mm. what was, how did you get caught? What sort of fraud was it at that time there? So we was doing the TVs in, um, in Sheffield, yeah. So there was, it was the department store called Alders. You remember Alders? No. They were like a really big department stores. They were all over the place, yeah. And in Sheffield, there's a Alders. Alders. Yeah, no. Come on. Alders. Hey, got me. Yeah, no. So like, you used to be able to go in there anyway and pick the forms up off the side, go out in the car, and fill them out, just go back in and give them to a member of staff. It was that easy, yeah. Like they just go ring it through, and that was it. Um, we'd been hitting plasma screen TV. Uh, this this one particular model. Well, so that's all you used to do, just go out and get in plasmas all day. Yeah, yeah. A minimum of ten I wanted a day. So because then I've hit, I know I've had a thirty grand touch. Like that's thirty grands in retail goods that I would have had that we can now carve up. Like when we get back between whoever's got the tellies, you know. So I was in on all the tellies, but you've got the team working as well, and I'm working as well. So. Good earner. Yeah, so I went to the, I went up to the woman and I started using a Scottish accent, right? So she hasn't clocked me. I see a Scottish accent. Ah, yeah. oh, come on, man. You know I can talk in Scottish anytime I want to. I'm really easy. My best friend is Scottish. Yeah. Yeah. So like doing it and you, and that's dialect as well, like because you can change it. You can go from Edinburgh to Glasgow. Yeah. Oh my god. Like so because it's it's just so when you're in the zone of doing that stuff, the others are using their just their normal accents, right? So the bird on the counter has thought, why is there so many Cockneys coming and buying the same TV? That's weird. weird. And so she calls at Sheffield in Meadowhall. They have like a police centre. Meadowhall. On, yeah, like Meadowhall no Meadowhall, Sheffield, yeah. yeah. So they're at Meadowhall, they've got like That's this police old shopping thing. centre. Massive, bro. It's huge, yeah. And we've annihilated it, yeah. So my mate brings me. Up. So 43-inch TVs, the LCD screens have just come out, right? So... That's all I'm interested in. All the 50 inch plasmas have gone through the floor. They're not worth no money. Yeah, they're like 1750. By the time you get half the knock on it, what's the point of that? You've just wasted 
that thing, right? So I tell the guy get, to get this TV, he gets the 50 inch one, because he says all the others are gone, yeah? Can I come and meet him? Because the box is bigger than a 43 inch, and now you've got, you need two people to carry this great big humongous box. So I go and meet him, and the old Bill watch us. Yeah, and then as soon as like my mate comes out from his bit, my other mate comes out from his bit, as soon as like we get to the box and put our hands on it, and that's it, the old Bill just come out of everywhere. Um, and then they kind of said that we'd been watching you for mm. ages. Um, and I was just like, bloody hell, that was it. So, but then in the van, so they find over 100 driving licenses, 100 credit cards, like, that, like I said to you, they've got stacks. Like, so we actually had internal information from credit reference agencies, yeah? So my mate was seeing a girl that worked in a credit reference agency, and so we was able for the big bits, the big nice bits that you want, yeah? Right, okay, like, I know that one's gonna go through, because you're not wasting your time. You wanna go and hit properly and not waste your time when you go to somewhere. You wanna make sure that you come out with the goods that you set out to get. Yeah. Um, so they found all this stuff, so they just nicked us, kept us locked up till the morning, and then of course in the morning they found the vans, they found like, because the car park dwindles and empties, yeah? We've got three vans parked up, yeah? And one of my mates has got away, yeah? They've nicked three of us, yeah? One of my mates and that one's got away. There's two people over there that have got away, right? And then here, I said to my mate, you should have just burnt the vans. Like, if he would have burnt them vans out, yeah, then they would never have got us in a conspiracy. But of course, like, I just played it like I was a van driver, yeah? So even in the book, like, it's got the uh, probation officers, uh, bit of where he says like uh, he doesn't believe what I'm saying like I'm obviously involved in a criminal network uh, that's out to hit just hit these f these things yeah and he was right uh, I was just trying to get away with it but that kind of was it we get nicked they've got so much evidence on us I go guilty my co-d goes not guilty um, and my other co-d goes guilty so um, so there's two of us going guilty in a case yeah. and then he's my other mate then split when I got his another brief from a different place. Um, and then they, they wiggled for a bit. They tried to, they were going to change it. Like they would, said it won't go to conspiracy. It might be aiding and abetting and like, because of all the paperwork. And then uh, they bowed us for six weeks, go back six weeks later. And my dabs are on every, because I've made all the driving licenses. I've made all the utility bills. I've done all that. Yeah. So my dabs are all over it. Overconfident. Like thinking that we're big time Charlies, yeah, and thinking that we're we're Larry Larges, and we ain't. Like yeah. we just think that we're just it's just there, and so we give them a treasure trove of evidence. You've been caught bang to rights. You pled guilty, mate. Had and all this sort of stuff. Like yeah. how much time were you looking at that made you want to just? So they actually said to me, yeah, in the beginning that I'd be looking at five years, right? So that's what kind of spooked me a bit. But then. I, I, like, as it went on, like my part in the conspiracy, like because I had to have me as number two, so there's only three of us, yeah, anyway, and, and they, the guy that's got away, that they know that's got away, they don't know about the other two, yeah, in the conspiracy, and they only have enough time to get you in a conspiracy where they can get everyone, they thought yeah. they were going to get the one that got away, and they didn't, yeah. So they think I'm number two, yeah, my mate's number three, they've got the other guy at number one. So when. We went to court, I think he said to me, my barrister said, you're gonna be looking at 18 months, yeah? So my wife is pregnant with my daughter. At that point, I've got three boys, yeah? She's gonna have my daughter anytime soon. So I didn't wanna miss that bonding period and I'd looked up, I'd done like, a bit of research on like what if someone goes on the run, like how long sentence, more to their sentence they can get, yeah? So it said three months. Yeah, if you just don't show up to court, the maximum you can get is three months. So I thought, wow, three months is like, that sounds all right to me, it's worth the risk. Yeah. Like, that means I get 21 months. It's not really that bad. I've been on the run for, you know, who knows what, how long I'm gonna be on the run for, what happens, yeah? So I decided to go on the run. And that's what happened. Mm. And then- Where did you go? I stayed here. I didn't need to go abroad. To Sheffield, yeah. Yeah, like it was in Sheffield. Yeah, but I mean, they're still, they're still gonna send it down to London, Met of which they did, but my nan, God rest her soul, I had like some, a cupboard at her house, yeah, that I just put some clothes in there, yeah. And she's clued up, my nan, she's been around me since I was a kid, like she knows old Bill have come to the door, even when they're just coming to see who you are or to search, like there's loads of different incidents that happen throughout life, but they go to my nan, she just shows them the cupboard and says, I haven't seen him for ages and shuts the door. I changed my driving license to a, 
another place down in Essex, yeah, so that took that offer there. I rented a couple of houses and put my name on the electoral roll over there and then just went and got an house miles away, yeah. Um, Crazy. And what I've done, yeah, like, so money, I need money now, I don't know, like, I've got, I've got some money, but like, I need, like, I've been used to money. Like, I'm used to living, like, I've got, the kids have got what they want, the missus can go shopping whenever she wants, like, everyone's got nice cars, like, I wanna, you know, how, how am I gonna make money? So, I, um, one of my mates was a black cab driver, yeah? And he says to me, you should go and rent a black cab. So I went, yeah? So he went, yeah, yeah, you can go and rent them. He said, all you need is the badge and bill, yeah? So, like, I've never seen a badge. I've seen a badge, but I'd never seen a bill, yeah? So a black cab driver's bill is like a piece of paper with their picture on it, PCO written up, and it has loads of bits of fibre in it, yeah, like like to prove its authenticity. So I made like I made one, and I went to a hobby craft and I bought some stuff and made the badge, just out of my mate's mould, yeah, and just messed about with it and painted it green because I know it's just a visual thing, yeah, and then went and hired a black cab. And so I black capped. Is that what you cruised around in for six years? Yes. Well, I didn't do it. I didn't quite last six years, but I've definitely done it for a good few years. I mean, and on a Saturday night, you could nick seven, eight hundred quid. Oh, like, it's, it's good money. Well, you actually did it being a cabbie, were you? Yeah, actually? man. I want yeah. to pick people up in the West End and just drove okay. up and down King's Road all night. So you knocked off, you weren't doing anything illegal this time here when you were on the, the run? I was there. doing, like, I'd get. I'd go and do some of, like, the bits every now and again with Big Man. Like, I'd go back and do, like, some other little bits. But being on the run kind of changed the yeah. dynamics back to your part of getting away with it yeah because like that feeling of you, the trust factor of trusting people well, it must have been a shit black taxi driver that way so was it was it daddy all of no that? you're not a done you're not a done listen yeah. so my old man owned a cab office in bermondsey yeah so i was a controller at the old man's cab office on many occasions in and out and always drove a mini cab when i was at it yeah because it's just a good smother you used to get like it's yeah, a really course. good smother right so I knew my way around really well, but I bought a serious sat nav. It's called a serious, yeah. It had everything in it: points of interest, hotel. So you just literally go along the thing and like go right, just like a just like your phones are now, yeah. And you could go right there it is. Right, so where do I want to go? Oh, the Hilton Park Lane. There it is, and it would straight away. The thing would just take you there. So and because I kept it there, so people in the back could never see it. Just in case they thought I was going. Sometimes you get someone going, oh, you're going a funny way. I'd say, oh, there's traffic around the other way though, mate, that's all. Like, and it worked. It just worked. Right, like, it worked. Yeah, yeah, it's good fun. And so, after being on the run for all these years, how did it come to an end? Like, was it through committing a crime at, that you came in? No? no, so I'd been, I was down in Essex, yeah, so I'd, I had like a load of mobile phones, like over the years, yeah, I'd had like all these different types of mobile phones and I wanted to just cash them in. I was coming to the end. I'd actually said that I was going to give myself up in the October. So I'd given like, I had a lump of dosh that I gave to a charity, yeah, because I, I just wanted to cleanse my, I went through this mad thing of just like wanting to just get rid of it. No good can come of that money. No stuff, like yeah. just can never ever come. I need to just move forward. Just right some wrongs. Yeah, and um, I had a bag of phones and I thought, right, that's the last little bit of cash that I'm gonna have. It's probably not even that much, probably like four or five grand's worth of mobile phones in like a big old one, yeah? So I go down to meet my mate down in Basildon and I pull in to a petrol garage, like a big, that like, used to have a car lot on the petrol garage there, yeah, like the Shell garage, uh, it's not Shell, it's BP, you know, on the main drag of the 127. So pull in now. And I've been smoking weed all day, yeah. Like, I, like I've got shorts on and flip flops. It's like a summer's day. So, like, I've pulled up in the thing, and my mate is sitting over there in his beamer, yeah. And I'm in a, li I had a little green polo, yeah. And I was just sitting in the polo like that, yeah. And my mate's like, like that, yeah. And I'm like, well, what's up? He's like, what's up? He's like, and I just looked, yeah, and I could see like the boot, just you know, the copper's boot, just sitting by the door. And I thought, oh, no, fucking hell, yeah. So I got out, put uh, petrol in the motor, gone in, walked past them, and there's two coppers sitting down as I walk in, eating a sausage roll off of the Wild Bean Cafe, yeah? Yeah, get free there. Like, yeah, yeah, like just oh, sitting yeah, there I eating. I used to avoid them ones. <laughs> yeah, like, and as I walked past them, I could just feel the daggers, and I thought, ah, oh, stink of weed, this is right thick, man, what are you doing? Like, But I've got a moody name that I give, right? That I'm comfortable, like, I'm not a, I'm quite, you know, I can make them relax, but I look like half a Wally, 
Yeah, and um, I thought, oh, I don't know. So I come out, get in the car, sit back down in the car. My mate's just sitting over that bit, yeah? And um, well, why I've been in there, he's come and got the, the phones out of the boot of my car and put them in his boot now, yeah? So they haven't even seen that bit, yeah? So now, as I'm sitting in the car, they said, can you get out, please, sir? So I got out of the car and I was like, yeah, you are right? I said, what's your name? So I gave him the name, yeah? And then I heard it come back to Warrant straight away, like, so I had an outstanding warrant for Sheffield and about six weeks after Sheffield. So what did you do, you gave your name? I yeah. gave, no, I gave my moody name. But it's already connected to it's your name. Connected, yeah, they've already... connected it, yeah? So like, they've just connected that name somehow, yeah? And then that was it. He just coughed, like he was like, you're under arrest, like this, yeah? And he said, like, he actually said to me after, I said, look, can I have a fag, like that? He said, no. I said, look, when we, when we get back to the station, you're gonna see why I want a fag, yeah? And he said, are you all right? Like, he said, I could see, like, your face, like, you look really relieved. And I sat down on the curb like this. And I was like, I just feel, you know, you're tired, like, I'm weary. I was like, I was glad it was over. Because it changed me, like, like I said a, a little while ago, I had road rage, gone now. Yeah, like, I still get a little bit now, but, like, now I'm not worried about it. But when I was on the run, didn't have it, like I didn't, because I didn't want to get in no altercations with no one. I'm gonna get in the car, keep it moving. When police come behind you, no matter how, I could be in a Ferrari, yeah? This buzzer's gone, mate, it's gone, out the window, because I'm worried about what's gonna happen at any moment, you can be taken away. So that relief of all of that stress, all of that pressure, all yeah. of it coming to an end. And I just got back to the station, and uh, when I was in Belmarsh, so what I didn't tell you was I cut my wrists in the block. Yeah, with so you know in the Bible you get a staple. Yeah. So I wasn't having that. I thought it was a liberty. Yeah, because I really genuinely wasn't trying to escape. No matter how big you think the rope was, yeah, I wasn't trying to escape. Yeah. So for me, I was like, hold on a minute, like I'm gonna cut my wrist with the with the thing and cut my wrist, rubbed it all together and got moved to healthcare. Yeah, uh, eight days in, got managed to get moved to healthcare. So that comes up when you get arrested. Yeah, it comes up that you've tried to commit suicide in custody before. Yeah, the police know that. So they let the geezers left the door open a jar a minute, yeah? So as he's like, so it's just like one of these rooms here, like the door's open there like that. So I just looked out the door like, yeah. There's another office, office opposite with a table just like this with one of the phones in the middle, you know, like the triangular phone things, yeah? Just walked in, sat down, dialed nine, and just blabbered like a baby crying my eyes out, yeah, to my wife, like, just saying, look, I've been on the run, you've been on the run, you don't even know you're on the run, like, all this stuff has happened to you, like, this is why, <laughs> yeah, and then the copper just comes back and was like, what are you doing in here? And like, I was like, that's it, and then that was it. She didn't come to see me for three months, and then she came to see me for three months. Uh, three months later, my son, and she's holding his hand and he's just crying, like, because the devastation now that is, is reality for them, I'm gone, I'm behind you. Even though, like, it's a Mickey Mouse sentence, really, in comparison to everything that I've just gone through. I ruined my life for 12 months. Mm. Like, that was the, one of the stupidest things I've ever done, yeah? But I didn't realise that on the last day of trial, the judge had put me as the same place as my other mate, who was the one at the bottom. He had had a cancer scare, and so the judge had given him 15 months. In between, my other mate, who was the number one in the conspiracy of jump bow, was on the run for two years, eight months, got caught, got two years, eight month sentence, yeah? So I thought, I'm somewhere in the middle, ain't I, yeah? And then all I'd done, like the judge asked me, he just said, why did you go on the run? And I said, look, my daughter, I didn't want to miss the bonding period. Um, and he kind of, he believed me. Like, he, he believed my story, he said, yeah. you're a man, you've admitted to why you went. And uh, he gave me, yeah, 12 months. So he gave me nine months for, for the thing, and then three months for obviously going on the run. So I knew that, like, at that point, like, okay, well, I suppose I'm away for six months, that's it. Yeah. Um, Ever since, uh, <coughs> ever since then you've been legit? Yeah, I come out. You wrote a book? I wrote a book, yeah, I wrote a book, The Big Con. When's the movie coming out? Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure, so I've done I've done something different. Like I've done, I can't talk too much about it, Sorry. but it's with BBC Studios couple, you've USA. Done, so you've done a couple of programs on the telly as well, haven't you? Yeah, like, so I make, like, so I've been, you know, since then, like, I've become, they call me King Con on Watchdog, yeah. Uh, so I've done like a few bits on Watchdog, just showing 
people how easy it right, is to get scammed. Watchdog being the program on the telly. Yeah, BBC One's Watchdog. Yeah, but the Watchdog program where they're talking about be yeah. careful what scams yeah, where scams are out yeah, there yeah, and yeah. all that. Yeah, well, you've been so up there on that. Yeah, I've done Watchdog. Yeah, I'm so not, I was I'm a presenter on Watchdog. Are you a presenter? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I'm not anymore. But I was a presenter. Get me on the Well, the crime stuff is really interesting. So then I made a show for Channel Four called What Makes a Murderer. I see that. A couple, of, my mates couple of your mates were on that, exactly. Um, so, and that's exactly about all the stuff we talk about, the trauma stuff, and yeah. making people understand it. So, TV tends to demonise people from our world. Yeah, they don't like to. They like to listen to our opinion, yeah, but like to show it in a it, different way. You know why though? Because I've realised that's their insecurity. Because everybody will have someone to blame. So it's their fault we never done this. It's their fault we never done. We was too scared to do this. We was too scared. To, how can we come out and do this? How can we come out and do that? So everybody's got to blame something in society because of their own insecurity. But the problem is as well, yeah. So so for TV, it's run by middle class people. We yeah. Know this. So there's no influence from working class people. We know so this. all like EastEnders, we know all this. of those shows are written by them people, we know right? This. So they're reflecting on what we and look did like. Did you notice? Did you notice? Yeah. I want to let your my viewers know now. There's never no swearing in EastEnders or Coronation Street. Like <laughs> right. yeah, I've sworn that many times just in this little podcast. So. No, what I'm saying to you, yeah, real people swear. swear. Yeah. And, and they don't wear labels. Mm, very There's true. no designer. Yeah. Why? Yeah, because it's moving. There's no designer. Yeah, they can't. Not unless they're paying for those product placements. They man, do now, man. Right? So, no uh, swearing. So that's nuts. Uh, so what about helping any of the institutions that obviously you were trying to target before? Have you done any help them at all? Have you yeah. worked with any of the banks, any of the... Yeah, so I think it's Kango. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's Kango now. It's Kango now. Nice, nice. Um, I, I mean... Don't start yeah, stuttering. Yeah, I do. I, I, I do. I, like, so what I say is, yeah, don't hate on my hustle. I worked out a way to protect the banks, yeah? Like, it's no different to when we would have been a criminal way. It's a protection racket in a very different way. I'm yeah. going the same way myself. Yeah, before. these guys need yeah, us. Them, yeah, they you need know, they us, need us. Like, and like, look. They need our brains. I, I can never no see him. Yeah, I can never see him crime. going and robbing an old woman. I wouldn't do that. He's not going to rob an old woman. He'd never steal a straight goer's money. He's not going to steal a straight goer's money. That's not what he's interested in. I was never interested in that. This thing now, this fraud thing, affects normal people. Corporations, man. Like, That's what I used to be. Big people, big numbers. You know, and that still affects us all because That's we all pay more for that. Slightly commendable. At least the innocent man in the street isn't suffering, but obviously the crime's never good in any. Yeah, which and I've met a lot of victims now as well. Like I get yeah. to meet victims of of the crimes that I obviously used to perpetrate. So now I, I sit and think, wow, like that woman lost her whole life savings, one hundred and forty thousand mm. pounds. Like, and that yeah, just that gets sucked a, out. Like, that is a living, you know, like I couldn't, I couldn't do like I have done fraud. I've been involved, honestly, in three fraudulent sort of scenarios. Schemes. One, one was with the car when I was in IB Park. The other one was I was down the West End, Hampstead, Knightsbridge, doing you know like Gucci cars. Just, just I did, I did, I did, just do cars every day. So you go and do four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine grand on a card all over London buying clobber. So I've done that a few times, but. I never done that because I got nicked and it was just embarrassing. I felt embarrassed walking out of a shoplift. Yeah, I hate that bit too. You're a shoplifter. Mm. Or you, like, to me, if I was going to get arrested, I want to get arrested for headline stuff. So that's why I went straight for the headlines. I was a bit egotistical like that. I was just embarrassed. Even burglaring, when I've done a burglary, what made me stop burglaring? I'm doing a burglary with my pal. Call me pal Tim, we're doing a gap. <laughs> We got him through a dog flat and we're rummaging. He's gone upstairs, but as you come down the stairs, you can go into the kitchen that way or that way. Yeah. Mm. So I'm in the kitchen, we're coming through this door. I didn't know that this door. So I'm running through this door. He's come, <laughs> he's come in with a hat on and a scarf. And I thought there's a the people that are in the gaff. Like, you know, like I've turned, seen the hat and I've turned to run. I'm in the deck and I, just, I couldn't move. I was running on the spot, my slipping. And he was like, what are you doing, mate? And when I heard his voice, I sort of stopped to look and thought, ah, oh, I <laughs> But it was that fear of getting caught in someone else's home. Mm. I just, from that day, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. So then, for me, thieving was a way of surviving without hurting people. And then, my 
of my life turned into mm. earning people more money, money. Earning, um, earning, earn, more than earning money, and that's when they went pear shirts, bro. Mm. So, <coughs> um, tell us about any advice that you could give our viewers on how to protect themselves from identity fraud. Um, you mentioned earlier about the Wi-Fi password and stuff like this. Yeah, you should tell them somewhere to go to, mate. You'll be all fucking. Right, <laughs> 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 so um so yeah so like i said to you yeah your your root of password is very important right because yep. most of them are set that people can look and find that stuff yeah and if you haven't changed it it means that if someone connects to your wi-fi they can get in and have a look at everything you're sending out of that port yeah yeah so everything that comes out of that port that gets sent out whether your phone connecting to it all of that is leaving a trowel yeah, so your phone creates an IP address that then really is just like your address. My business partner Solomon, who's a 23 year old amazing hacker, yeah, like I'm truly gifted. But using the skills in the right way today. Yeah, so he actually was, uh, um, so he actually was a real hacker that got arrested. Um, so he actually got marched out of his school at 16 with over two million credit card details stored on his computer and then the NCA take him and he learned he taught the NCA how to hack basically yeah, yeah. so he's on their website you can go and see him on the National Crime Agency's website he's an absolute legend I'm so lucky to be mm. able to work with him Fantastic. the stuff that he can do just through that just makes us into Mission Impossible you know and, and allows yeah allows the stuff to happen so yeah change your route of password that definitely is and number one all your passwords need to be different for like my email my Facebook my um, yes, take so the password. Best this. thing is get a password manager. Yeah, go and look at a reputable password manager. And every time you What's sign a password in, manager, uh, so password manager, sorry to me. A password manager is something that will manage your password. What, a little yeah? device or something? No, so you can just get them online. You can just look in the app store, password manager, and look at for the highest rated ones. Yeah, I don't yeah. endorse any products. I don't tell people about to get any products. Yeah. Um, once you've got a password manager, you can. So my computer has one. Yeah, built into it. So when I sign into a website, it will just say save in your password manager, click save, it will save it. And when you go back onto that site, instead of you having to try and remember a million passwords, you just look, it will list the sites that you want to try and look in for, select what site you're trying to log in for and your password's already stored. Mm. That way, you get to just change that one password on your password manager, right? So the second thing that I would say, there's a website called Have I Been Pwned? Yeah, right, so I'll, I'll stop you there quickly, right? So, what do I do if I don't understand the word that you just said? So, the best thing that you can do, no, that's totally, I get it, mate, because there's a lot of people like most that. Right? Gonna be in that most people yeah, are like that. That's yeah. why I asked. So, yeah, so, it's good, yeah. so, let's start with your router then, yeah? So, if you just go onto your computer and you bring up your Wi Fi, yeah? Type in your IP address, yeah, which is on the bottom of all your cards. Yeah, all your bits and pieces. You'd Some have QR codes on the bottom of your little router box at home, yeah? Get to that and then just go into password, manage password, change password, yeah? Right. That's that bit done, yeah? And, and passwords, so you should try and always choose four different words, right? That are totally unrelated. Yeah. So if you've got your favorite pet, yeah, or your kid's name in your password, Terrible. you're in trouble. Yeah, because Solomon can target all your other stuff by just one putting one piece of information and looking at you, Match and everything stuff. else that's out there will get matched in seconds. Yeah, so, um, so always use four different words. So, for instance, chair, camera, light, drawers. That's got it's totally unrelatable to anything you've got, but yeah. just that one password that's long enough for you to keep in that way. Yeah. Um, what about VPNs? To so VPNs, so VPNs are really good. Again, you have to get a very good one, yeah? So there's lots of ones that claim to be so unbreakable. So the free ones, these tall ones and stuff like this, they're loads of shit, aren't they? Yeah, any, so if it's free, anything that's free, you're the product, right? If it's free, you're the product. There's no such thing as free on the internet, yeah? Yep, so they're still selling your data, so it can't be private. They're going to be selling your data, they're going to be monitoring. So on your phones, we all have cookies, right? So now when you go onto a site, onto any news site, or to wherever you go, it says, accept cookies. So cookies are like malware, right? That search in the back of all of your phones and look at all the stuff that you like so to you consume. you accept cookies, then? I, I, I do, but I go in and I play, I reject, Just. like... I'll accept just the needed cookies because I, what I don't want them to do is on my social media when I'm scrolling through my pages to throw me a load of different ads about 
the trainers that I might have been looking at on JD Sports. I, they don't need to do that. I, I can. I want to look for what I want to look for, and that can become a bit intrusive. Mm. But cookies are malware, basically. Yeah, malware is what reads you, tells you, encrypts you, and all that kind of stuff. Um, all right. Well, um, yeah. There's some tips there for the viewers to hopefully get a VPN, change your passwords. Yeah. Don't think that maybe you're not that interested. People won't want to get into. People want to get into everyone's identities because they will use your identity. Good. You can come onto my way. page as well. Yeah. So we have a page called We Website. Fight. That's what I was yeah. going to say. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Listen, Anything that you want to get directed towards, anything you're doing, use my platform, son, and just spit thank it all you, bro. No, no, that's what it's all about. Isn't thank it? you, man. I love Rising you, man. Thank you. It's all ships. It's yeah, not even about thank you. It's just when I come on your platforms and I do your thing. You're going to expose me, even when you talk to certain people, put me in certain environments already without me even doing anything. Yeah, yeah, so no, I'm in the math of people who are on film sets at the minute in America. You know what I'm no, no, so man, I know, bro. It's good. So, tell us uh, the website address. So, it's uh, wefightfraud.org. Oh, um, yeah. We fight fraud, all one word. We fight fraud.org. Yeah, we have a Facebook page. You can go onto the Facebook page. We kind of update, we have LinkedIn pages as well where we show. Right, so I've just done something called the 12 Fools of Christmas where I dress, dressed up as Father Christmas and for 12 days we've given people different tips every day. Yeah. Whether your level of understanding is low or high, um, that's what we try and do is convey that information quite easily. Do you mind if I look at that? Of course you can, mate. Yeah. 12 Fools of Christmas from Marvin Arnold. Love it. It's great. And then... Um Reminders, you mentioned your book earlier. Reminders what the book's called uh, and where people can find it. I've got that. one in my bag. Can you big get one? Yeah, I've got one for both of you. Yeah, so fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please read it. It's um, uh, 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 the blue one, bro. It's just it, just open it up and yeah, it's I'm in actually an avid reader of all crime related Oh, really? Stuff, so oh, great. Really uh, yeah. it's, I, I've been told it's very different. It's not like I'm not doing the, the bigging up the crime thing. I'm really talking about the trauma and just the stuff that happens. Good. I mean, you have to play the, the marketing game, you know, um, yeah. for everyone. It says it. Um, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, that's the book. Uh, my story's in the back. Uh, that's for both of you. Please, um, um, that's amazing. Buy the book, man. Yeah, so thank you. Much appreciated. I tell you what, you look a lot older on that book. Yeah, cover, I, 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 thought, I thought that when I saw that picture. I think I'm a bit fatter there, though. I think I'm I've older. got a bit yeah. more weight on my yeah. face and I around my cheeks and all that. Whereas I've been in the gym swimming, doing my thing. Well, I can't promise I'll read it all. But I'll read as much as you know, my brain just switches off with books. Do you know what it is? I've got, you know when you got to lay there like that, and my hands are like, yeah. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna. Have you got an audio book? It's gonna come on audio book. I send it to you once I've got it. I'll, I'll have it on audio book. Thank you. I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna tell. You so can have that you, anyway. I want you to have it. I'll have it. But I'm not, I don't yeah. want you bring me through. I might have you read it because I'm. I'm <laughs> no, no, no. I don't read. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You. But I'll get it on audio book. I'll listen. Yeah, to yeah. Hear you. Hear you. I'll read it and tell you about it. Yeah, thank you. But um. Is there anything else you want to tell me about it? Try it. Anything else you want to touch on today at all, Mark? Or any questions for me? Missed out or no, everything because to the reason is because Tony's one of the good guys. So I'm saying to like, he ain't not the evil criminal crime for fucking badding people up, mm. for laws people up, to so, hurt people. Yeah, it's just, just I like Tony because of the direction he's gone in and what he's done and what he's done for others and how he selflessly links everybody up to the government of your network. And I appreciate that. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate I'll always do that because it's important to me and important to all of us yep. that the stories get shared because the heart That's is what it's all about mate yeah i don't want no other kid to suffer what i've said in the same way that you and like when when it's to see you saying the stuff you said that's been inspirational to all of us anyone else out there's thinking that should be thinking that for sure yeah, yeah. So, well, like they don't do think it but not a lot of them say it that's the reality yeah, nothing yeah. but the truth we're yeah. gonna change that man don't worry like i said this has been really enjoyable i know the viewers are gonna absolutely love this tony Thank and you. Viewers, get in touch with Tony. Get yeah. the book. Thank get you. Get on the website. Time. Wonderful, guys. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much, guys. This has been Nothing But The Truth with Tony Sells. Tony. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Marvin. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, thank you, guys. Perfect. Wonderful. Perfect. Thank you. That's, uh, really enjoyable.